hundredth video. We started in July of last year. Last week, we posted the hundredth video in YouTube. It's been just under one year, and I want to talk about the people, the equipment, and the techniques, and the lessons I've learned. There was this lady friend of ours in the family. She is a lawyer. And one day she said to me, could you speak uh, in Facebook Live in a particular platform? And this is how the platform was called. Her name was Samshurya Tina. And she said, can you speak? And I had no idea how to do it. So she sent four pages of detailed instructions on what I should do and what I shouldn't do. And what we did was we placed our iMac and we put very large books on one on top of the other, raised our iMac by about four feet. And then we shot this video on um, force majeure. It was a disaster as a video, but it had good success. And ever since then, I've been shooting on and off. Sometimes a minister will call and say, you know, many poor people in the uh, employment sector are going through a great deal of difficulty because of COVID-19. Could you do a series of videos on how they could overcome difficulties if they are fired? So we got hold of a man by the name of VK Raj and I did several videos with him. VK Raj is a famous industrial lawyer and he assisted me with it. And I think if credit were to go, I would take 5% credit and he would take 95% credit for all those things. He was very kind to me. One day, a lady by the name of Gina came to see me about a particular issue. And then she said, are you the guy who's doing videos in YouTube? I said, yeah. She said, I want to make some suggestions to you. Can I see you this weekend with my team? She turned up with a guy called Adre and he brought with him three different lights, two different cameras, sliders, tripods, and a whole load of things with another gentleman who was a sound engineer with a zoom, I call it a zoom recorder, I, I don't know. And they did about 10, 15 videos and they took a lot of trouble with it. One day she said then, okay, uh, this is how you do it. And I said to her, thank you so much. Um, I am not paying you. It's not fair for you to do this work for me because I'm told it's very expensive. And she said, never mind. I just wanted you to improve and I wanted to help. So Gina was a person who helped a great deal. When she had gone away, my niece came along and she said, oh, your sound isn't, it's not very good, Appa. Uh, I'll give you a, a better microphone. So she brought a microphone that looks like a battle axe, you know, this big. And she came and she used tape, gaff tape, and she stuck it to a water bottle which was this high and she put it out of frame and then we had this sound and she helped me with editing a number of videos. Her name is Nadisha and she requires mention. And then one day I met a guy called Samad Hassan. I didn't know a damn thing about Samad Hassan except that his father, Hassan Mutalib, had been a senior member who had worked with Finas with British cinematographers, who's an expert in semiotics as well. And he's written a book on uh, um, cinema in Malaysia. I didn't know anything about it. So Samad came and said, can I call you Anne? I said, okay. So I said, Samad, I got no money to give you. Samad said, Anne, I want to do something for the betterment of the people. I don't have money to do it. To do a video or a documentary takes a lot of money. You have legal knowledge. I have some knowledge with stuff to do with cinematography. Can I help? And he stayed with me for, I think, 82 videos. And this is probably his 100th video with me. And he helped me. And then I found out that this guy was an expert photographer. He had himself assisted in the production of about 100 over movies. Some of his movies were, in fact, Tamil movies. Um, there was a thing called Jagat, I think, that she, he did. And there were other movies that he had done. And then he also did editing and what they call coloring, and uh, it was very useful. And behind all of this, my partner Gita prepared most of the scripts. She would check the law, make sure they're accurate. There was Saran who would help me doing all the shots, and there was Prabhkirat Singh. And this guy, he does all the preparation of my scripts. He gets them sorted, he loads them to my website. He doesn't have to do any of these things. So to Gita, to Saran, and to my dear Prabh Kirat, 
Thank you so much. The one person who paid the price of all this work was my wife, Mala. When, you know, COVID came, income had fallen by 90%. We were working three times harder, like more than 20,000 lawyers across the peninsula. And she said, what's your problem? I said, my iPhone is overheating. I can't use my iPhone. I sometimes need a B-roll. And she said, okay, what do you want? I said, I need this camera. How much is it? I said, it's so many dollars. She said, it's too expensive. I can't do that for you. I tell you what, I'll get you something intermediate. I'll get you a decent kit lens. You do well. If after MCO things happen, we'll think about other equipment. So using a Fuji Film X-T4 with a kit lens, 18 to what, 50 millimeters or something? Zoom lens. I've been doing most of my videos. I've made mistakes. Sometimes I put the video too close to my face, sometimes too far away. Sometimes, you know, I look at the lighting. Uh, I'll show you some photographs of, you know, how I did this lighting. There were times I used my table lamp. It was very difficult. It took a lot of time. You know, one video of five minutes takes at least a minimum of seven days to 14 days to make. You have to think of an idea. You have to script it because a movie is made in three stages. During the script, a movie is made. During the production, the movie is made. And then in the editing, the movie is made. There are three different layers. I didn't know anything about it. So I went and bought Final Cut Pro. I learned how to use it. I would cut it. At about two in the morning, I would send it off to Samad. When we were doing all the videos about the AG's chambers and emergency, I would call Samad at two in the morning and say, Samad, this one needs to go out at 10 in the morning. Can you do it? Samad would sit up until four in the morning he would edit the videos, color it. Where there are errors, he would correct it. He would send it back to me. I would look at it and say, you've made a mistake. Constitution is spelled this way and not that way. He would then do it. He would correct it. He will export it. All that takes a long time. His computer would crash. My computer would crash. Lights would go out. Sometimes my internet won't work. And we did it. And then I realized, if you want to be a member of the YouTube community, every person who is a YouTuber has gone through these difficulties. I'm not doing anything new. But my difficulty was, as a senior advocate and solicitor, I couldn't say anything about my firm. So one day in one of my videos, in the second video, I said, my name is G.K. Gunnison and I'm an advocate and solicitor. And the moment I put it out, I published it, Guna Silan called me and said, you can't do that, you know, that's not fair. I said, no, Guna, it's, it's approved information. He said, I know. But at a time when everybody is suffering, you're out there and you look like you're advertising. Don't say you're an advocate and solicitor. Just deal with the subject and leave it. I said, okay. So his advice was good advice. And uh, I sometimes worry. I ask colleagues, you know, do I look like I'm advertising? Because if I am, then I'd better stop it. And they would say, no, it's useful information. As long as you keep it neutral, do it this way, it's fine. Then we've had politicians calling me saying, look, can you write an essay in favor of this person? Can you write an essay in favor of that person in that party? I thought about it and I said, no, politicians are all the same. When they are in power, they want their work to be supported. When they are not in power in the opposition, they would want to attack everybody. So I said, I won't attack anybody. If I have something to say, I will say it. And I will say it because it needs to be said. Then I realized many people had no understanding of the constitution, including I. They had no understanding of electoral laws. They had no understanding people used power, how power is to be used, who had what responsibility to whom. Uh, as I recall last week, the Chief Justice said, the constitution is currently being tested in a manner never tested before. I agree with her. So if I could have a channel where I could speak to you about fun things, techniques of litigation, techniques of dealing with clients, important issues on the constitution, anything surrounding the law, I thought, that would be a good thing. But some people say, no, you must say things that are also politically important, you know. You must be politically correct. And then you must say this thing because then you will have 50,000 hits. I thought about it and I said, is that what I want? Do I want more hits? And I realized I didn't want more hits. I just wanted to have a channel that said neutral things about subjects. People could take that knowledge that they had acquired from this channel and do whatever they wanted with it. So this channel is for you. You could be in England, you could be in Zimbabwe, you could be in Finland, you could be anywhere. But the subjects that I speak about must have a universal value to them. And that is what we are trying to do. We will continue to work hard for you. I have a very busy litigation life. 
Sometimes on a regular basis, I work 18 hours a day. My partners and my colleagues in the firm work 18 hour days on most days. COVID-19 has been very unkind to all of us. People in power have sometimes used it well. They've dealt with COVID the correct way. At other points, they have used COVID-19 as an excuse to do things which are unconstitutional. Um, there have been situations when uh, we could see how our medical profession has worked very, very hard exposing themselves to infection and certain death. And they've done a wonderful job. And I thought I should go out on record and say to all the people in the medical profession, doctors, nurses, surgeons, you know, even the simple peon in the hospital who constantly come in contact with people with COVID-19, who risk their lives for us day in and day out. Terima kasih. Selamat berpuasa. Terima kasih banyak tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Thank you very much.